Well, good morning. Welcome to Viking Preparedness. I'm Pastor Joe Fox. <clears throat> it always starts innocently enough, right? With all the best intentions, <laughs> whether those are really good intentions or they're just faked good intentions. Think about, uh, you know, in the western states, <clears throat> Oregon, Washington, California, somewhere out there, they're, they're trying to get, and they have been trying to get legislation through for a while that uses OnStar type technology on your car so that you can be more fairly taxed. You know, if you're not driving your car as much as I am, why should you pay as much tax as I do instead of paying it at the gas pump, which seems to me to be a perfectly reasonable solution. But, you know, they say, well, now we have these cars that get better gas mileage, so we're not getting the tax revenues, you know, whatever. They come up with these stupid reasons. The real reason they wanted to track your car is so that they can track you, so they know where you're going. <clears throat> but that's not what I want to talk about today. What I want to talk about today is an article I just read, and actually I skimmed it, on uh, California is advancing a bill that would allow, that would require a kill switch in all smartphones starting in, I think, 2015. And uh, the reason they, they say they want that is because there's just this rash of thefts of smartphones, and so they want to have a way, they want to mandate that the manufacturers, providers of these phones, have a way to kill that phone so it never works again if someone in fact reports it stolen. Eh, that sounds okay, you know, maybe. That's not what it's for. It's so that in the time that they need to, they can shut down all communications. Now you already know that you're monitored, right? I mean, you, come on, Snowden, it, it, read, read what Snowden's been putting out. If you transmit electronically, it's being picked up. Now the problem, if you look at it from the other side, the problem with that is that they're not good enough to, to analyze all the traffic in real time, right? I mean, they just don't have the resources to do that, but it gets stored, your data, your transmission gets stored, and if they want to look at it later, they can, probably. If I knew that, it would probably be classified and I couldn't tell you, but I bet you that's what it is. Um, <clears throat> and so, in times of crisis, they don't want the opposition, right, which might be you, <laughs> um, communicating. And so they'll just pew, shut down all the phones. So what are you going to do about that? You know, we can sit here and whine about it. Man, can you believe what they're doing? Man, man, man. That's not doing you any good. I was just talking to some guys uh, yesterday. They were from Mexico. And we were talking about the world. And they were actually pretty well enlightened. And the one guy was telling me about, you know, the, the powers that be at the very, very high levels, who I don't want to mention, um, that make things work and go in the world. And I told him, you know, that's great to be aware, but man, what are you going to do about it? Because see, you can't do anything about that. Not you personally, not most of you. But what you can do is take care of yourself, your family, and your circle. And so back to kill switches on phones. What are you going to do if, you know, you really need to communicate with people and it doesn't work? It could be killed via a kill switch. It could be just that the circuits are overloaded. You know, in 9-11, um, there were so many people trying to use their phone that it didn't work. Same thing with Katrina. You know, the cell towers just get overwhelmed. Um, there could be a solar flare, man-made, nature-made, you know, yah made whatever, and, and that could zap your phone. And, and yet, and still, you need to communicate with people. So how are you going to do that? <clears throat> and I submit to you that, like everything else, you need to start thinking about that now, and you need to put some processes into action. You need to take some steps. Excuse me, I need my coffee. I don't need it, but I really like it, and it'll get cold if I don't drink it. Um, and so a couple things to think about. You should probably have a plan with your peeps, right, with your people, on what to do during uh, an emergency. You define emergency uh, when there is no communication. Example, um, kids are at school, and solar flare goes off, you know, phew, and kids can't call you, you can't call them, school can't call buses. Uh, maybe you make a deal with your kids, I'll meet you at this corner. And then you walk, you know, to go get them or something. <coughs> Excuse me. Or, um, you know, some big terrible thing, which I don't have to, you know, just think of something happens. And your group, let's say down in Georgia, wants to go link up with a group in, uh, you know, Kentucky, right? And But you haven't done the coordination for it. So how do you do that? How do you communicate? Well, you know, there's people who say things like Faraday cages, which is probably another video for another time, and you, you have some radios buried, and so does the other group, and that's the time you get them out, maybe. Um, 
or maybe it's more local and you send messengers. You know, that's a great use for a kid in a bicycle. Hey, go down there to the Jones house and tell them that uh, we'll be down in about 30 minutes or something like that. Or go see what they need. You know, you can, you can send a little child to do that. But those are the kinds of things you should start practicing now. Maybe you could do some clandestine, you know, communication where you have a dead drop site. Like the, the hollow of that tree back there is where we keep messages, you know. And so every time we walk out there in the morning, we kind of check the hollow of the tree and see if there's a message for us from somebody else. Or maybe you just have plans that go into effect when there is no more communication. In the event we lose communication, when I was in Special Forces, we had to, uh, when we were out on a mission, we had to call back home, phone home ET, uh, every so often. And if we missed so many scheduled contacts back home, you know, with, with the radio, and I'm talking back home to our base, um, they would automatically take some actions. You know, they would fly a resupply package that had radios and batteries and other things in it, and uh, we would have to go and get that. So it was really important if you couldn't make commo to, hey, you better get that or we got a long walk to go pick up some stuff. Um, but, you know, maybe you do something like that. Just have a plan to go into effect when there is no normal electronic communication. Uh, start thinking about that. Start kicking that around. And then once you get some ideas, play with them. Practice them. All right. I'll see you out there.